Today was pondering on something to work on as I'm kind of caught up with the customer orders at the moment. So I figured I'd tackle some of my own stuff. And I have a piece of equipment that is uh, in use 24 hours a day. It's always running, but it's uh, basically reaching the end of its useful, safe life. So we got to do something about it. Let's uh, take a look at what I've got here today. For years, this is the device that I've been using that generates the time that I've had displaying on my monitor because it has an HDMI output. Um, the battery is finally puffed up and it's popped off the screen, so I think it's time to uh, remove the battery for safety. I don't know if it'll work without the battery in it. I hope it does, but we're going to see if we can spudge our way in here and disconnect that battery and remove it because uh, I'd like to keep using this. It pulls the time off the internet so it's accurate and uh, it makes it gives me a use for this old blackberry the, the rubber coating is starting to go all tacky like all those devices do but uh, I'm hoping full I can get this thing apart and get into it and remove the battery and it'll boot up without the battery then it'll be safe because when lithium batteries get puffed up like this they become very unstable so if you've got one that's puffed up it's time to get it out of service. I have no idea how this comes apart or even if it does come apart but I'm assuming that it does split right here. There's got to be clips on here that hold this thing together. I mean the screen does this does flip open one of these sides opens up It will open like that. The digitizer, I don't want to damage this, otherwise it'll be shot. For those of you wondering, this was Blackberry's only tablet that they ever produced, and it was you can see ultra the battery secure. Behind this thing, too. Battery's right in behind the screen. I don't know whether the screen will lift out or whether uh, the back has to come off. That's the. Uh, $64,000 question. I've never opened one of these up. Unfortunately, this is kind of useless now because they shut the network down a few years ago, so you can't get apps for it. You can't even browse on it anymore because it tries to log in to check email to a server that no longer exists. So that comes up with an error. So basically what I've been using it for is just to generate the time and spit it out on HDMI. Back probably does pop off of it. Send it over my network. And That's about all it's useful for. Attack which would be the ultimate, because I don't want to damage that digitizer. But I have a sneaking suspicion that it does it does separate here. It appears that it does, the back does pop off of it. I just have to spudge it open. It's not easy, that's for sure. But it does, it does, the back does pop off. It does split right here. So what I want to do is just take this apart, remove the battery, and then I want to see if it'll power up without the battery. And if it will, great, I'll continue to use it as a clock. But I just I just can't run it like this with this battery puffing up. It just makes me too nervous that it's going to uh, start a fire. Because, you know, lithium batteries themselves just can be very unpredictable. Oh, look, it's still got power in it. It powers up. Lithium batteries themselves, those just can be too unpredictable once they get old and start to swell up like this. This makes me nervous. Plus the fact that the screen's pushed off of it. It's bulging the screen. There, there it goes. Spudgers are never around when I want them.
That's got it. There. All right. There's. Oh, look at that. It's got two batteries in this thing. Huh. Well, I think lithium polymer battery. It's got two batteries that have puffed up in this thing. Ha, do not. <laughs> To reduce the risk of fire or burns, do not disassemble, crush, puncture, short, external contacts, or dispose of in fire or water. No usable parts. You think? Hmm. Okay, it's got two batteries in here. How the hell do I get them out? I'm assuming that this is the connector for it. Where's the other one connected? Is it connected here? Is this it? I'm assuming that that is the, uh, the power connector for the battery. I might be wrong, but I might be right. There. I think that's the battery disconnected. That battery is disconnected. I don't know what holds it in place. It's probably just stuck in here, like most of them. I might just lift up if I, oh, there's some tape on here with an antenna. Better remove that. Wi-Fi antenna. Now this battery might just lift up. I think it's just, I think it's just stuck down with double, like, tape. Pretty sure it's just stuck on with tape like most of them so it should just ease out of here Sure glued these things down good. Holy crap. It's like connected to this one through a, an internal connection here it looks like it looks like there's an internal connection that goes over to this one on this side so it looks like so in that case I'll have to lift the circuit board out to uh, remove it I mean if that's the case if this is disconnected um, if they're both connected through this one connector which I think they probably are I can probably do, if I can power this up with the with them disconnected like that, then then I'll just nip the uh, the interconnect between them and pull this other battery out. Or for that matter, if it'll run with them disconnected, I could just leave the batteries in there and just run it for the timepiece on it. Right? Um, you can actually let the gas out of this thing too. I've done that before. Uh, but I'm going to go grab an adapter and see whether this thing will actually power up and operate with the battery disconnected. That would be the ultimate. If it will run with the battery disconnected, then we're good. Alright, let's see if it will turn on. Which one's the power button on this? It's the one on the left, I think. It's this one here. Some of these won't turn on if the battery's not connected, so it may not turn on. Should be that one there. Mm. 
No, it won't power up without the battery. There's security chips built into the BMF circuit that prevent it from starting. Uh, I guess it's not going to turn on without the batteries connected, which kind of sucks. I certainly don't want to run it with puffed up batteries. Oh well, I guess it's days are done. If I plug the battery in, of course it will boot. I just wonder if it will boot, whether it will stay booted if I boot it up with the battery plugged in and then pop the battery out. Will it stay powered up? Because that's another possibility, right? If it, uh, if it needs the battery to be connected to boot, if I can boot it up and get the clock running and then pop the clip out for the battery and it will stay running. That I don't know. You know, at least stay running until the power goes out. Right? That's what we're going to figure out, whether it will boot up and run. Okay, I booted it up. I wonder what happens when I pop out the battery. Will it die or will it keep running? Well, let's just pop out the battery and see. It keeps running. Well, this might be the solution. If I remove the power, obviously, it's going to die. And I don't think it'll boot up without that battery being on there, but... Uh, once it's booted up, it uh, seems like it will run without the battery. That might be my, my safety solution. So hopefully I can keep this thing running a little while longer. Um, so I've got all these different, basically, I, I mean, i got a bunch of games and stuff on here. That, this actually was a, a nice little tablet in its day. But uh, basically all I use it for now is for things like the desk clock. But i got all kinds of different, all kinds of different clocks on it. That should boot up momentarily here. And... Uh, I'll probably have to synchronize it because it's been powered down for a while there. Okay, so I cut the wrong time on it, right? Because it's been powered down. But what I can do on here is just uh, just kind of I got to turn my um, airplane mode off, let it connect so that it can synchronize, and then turn it back on because. This is trying to contact the old BlackBerry servers, which are gone. So I turn that, turn the airplane mode off. Just leave it set off long enough. The clock will synchronize with the current time. Takes a second, and then it will synchronize. And I, I typically do that off. There we go. And then I can bring that up. Now the, the clock is synchronized and it's running at the correct time. This feeds out through the HDMI out into my house cable, where it's turned into a video signal. And it feeds out on my house cable on one of the unused modulator channels. And uh, then I can display it anywhere in the house. And it's accurate. Again, I do have to once in a while synchronize it because when it's not connected to the network, it will obviously gain some time. But uh, other than that, it's it, it stays accurate. What is this one here for? There we go. Do that. Now, if I pop, now I've done some surgery on the batteries. This is just to hold the. This is just the screws that held this in. I, I poked a hole in the the bag and let all the gas out, so there's no longer they're no longer puffed up. And then I can just pop the battery off. Well, that time it didn't stay running. It did stay running the first time, but this time it shut down. Anyway, it's it's running again, I guess. I, I doubt very much whether I'm going to put this back into service, though. With the battery packs that puffed up on it, it's just... Um, I, I've, I mean, I've, my uh, my phone has been, like, fine for the last couple of years until the battery will no longer hold a charge. This one here won't hold a charge. If I unplug it, you'll see it probably shut down within a few seconds. Okay, now it's holding a charge for more than five seconds, but... Uh, it will shut down. Uh, does it tell me what shape the battery's in? It says it's charging because the battery's plugged in. But if I unplug it, it, it should go down very quickly. So I just let the gas out so at least I can put the back on it. 
without it popping the screen off on it. But again, I'm not going to be putting this thing back into service just because once the batteries have gassed like that, you don't know what else is going on. It, sh it actually shouldn't uh, try to charge them. The battery management software should cut them off, but it's running on battery right now, which is odd. I figured it would have shut down long ago. Anyway, I just figured I'd show you guys this old playbook. I've had this thing for, I don't know how many years I've had it, a long time. I don't know what year they came out. What year did the playbook come out? Yeah, as you can see, the battery didn't last very long before it died. It was 2011. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, what, uh, 13 years old? I guess 13 years old now, 2011. Same year I got my Chevy Volt. And uh, it's been, for the last number of years, it's just been used as a, as a clock to feed a signal into my little CRT monitors to help me burn the screens out on those. But I guess uh, it's days now are done. And if I'm going to have something display the time on my old CRT monitor, I'll have to find something else. Anyway, I figured you guys might like to see what inside of one of these units looked like. At least now the back cover will snap onto it without the screen popping off. And uh, we'll just put this back into the collection of uh, stuff to be recycled. this goes on like that first I think that's how it goes on it should just the top should just snap on that is uh, how this thing went together So this is my BlackBerry 10, my old Z10. This is what I used to use to display time until the battery failed on it. And for a while I I just used a 18650. I cut the battery cut the battery management chip out of the battery and wired it up to one of these and plugged it in. The problem is it was always overcharging and killing the 18650 so I, I shelved that and I was using the playbook for my time generator I really would rather use this though because this has got m m way more cool clocks on it and I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to make it work so I just started doing some experimentation I'm going to show you what I did it was really quite simple um, but this is the one I, this is what I like about this one here I can bring this this is just the browser if I go into uh, where was it in it was in uh, it was in miscellaneous yeah, look at this one. This is a. This one's cool. Watch this. Oops. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That has got to be the coolest display. I've ever seen of displaying the time this is a flash file this is the only device to actually play this file because of course Adobe killed flash and they removed it you should be able to run this on your PC but you can't do it anymore because Adobe killed flash they, they killed shockwave they removed flash they removed it from everybody's computer but they didn't re remove it from that because this is not online I'm not doing any updates. The old BlackBerry 10s played Flash by default. I downloaded this file onto it years and years and years ago. And it's working again. I haven't seen this for several years since this phone went down. Since the battery went down on it. And I wasn't going to buy a new battery because I used to just keep it powered up. I really, All I really care about is can I power this thing up from a USB source? and uh, use it to display the time because it has a it has a HDMI output which I can just plug into my my system and send this out to my little CRT monitor so it looks cool I have of course other other clocks on here as well if I close this one over close this one up and I go to um, some of the other ones I've got them all right I've got them all on here
takes a second to load. Oh, that one's a different one. That one has to sit up this way, I guess. I have different ones, different different clocks. Let's close that one down. Let's try some of the other ones here. Um, desk clock. Yeah, that one there. I think that's the one I normally was using on the other one, on the on the playbook. There we go. All right. Nice thing about this is it's it's the time is exactly correct. That's the time now. It's in 24-hour mode. I got to switch it to 12, but. Um, it picks up the time from the internet so it's always dead on and I, I wanted to run one without a lithium battery I don't like lithium batteries just sitting on charge all the time and I say so I figured out how to do this and I'm going to show you guys how, how, how I did it because it was actually a lot simpler so much simpler than I thought it would ever be it's just a straight USB cord there's nothing fancy but the well, let me show you. The battery management chip has to be there. I, this is where I had the lithium 18650 connected, but the problem with that was when it was plugged in, it was always charging the 18650, and eventually it would go overcharge and it would it would kill the cell. And of course, once the cell was killed, this shut down, and it would take you know it would take a month or so, but it would eventually overcharge the cell, and then the cell would go dead, and then it would just zero volts, and this thing would just shut down. So I, I kind of scrapped it, and what I have done, it's pretty simple. I just took the negative terminal from the USB cord, soldered it on with the negative terminal here, and the positive terminal soldered it onto the positive, and the two that went to the battery management chip they are just wired straight through so there's no battery on there there's nothing else on there. this is just held in place with hot glue it's just the cord it's such a simple hack to make these old make an old phone like this operate on power so that I can play files on it and I don't really want to play files on it I just want to use it as a desk clock that's all that's the only thing I want to use it for as a desk clock and now I can just power it up off my USB power supply that was the simplest hack you know, it was like, you can't just connect the positive and negative. It'll just shut down with a message telling you that it needs a battery. It doesn't actually physically have to have a battery. All it has to have is the chip that's in here. This was part of the original battery. I cut that out. That was in the end of the battery. This has the terminals that actually pr pressed up against here. I just took that part out. For years, I was thinking I actually had to have a battery. I don't. All I have to have is power and that chip and it works. Pretty neat, huh? Got to find a use for these old Blackberries. They they never die. And this one here, again, because it can do, because it can play the uh, shockwave file, that uh, clock that has the handwriting on it, I think is the coolest one that there is. Anyway, now I can put this one back in service and uh, be happy, as they say. The old playbook that I showed you on the beginning of this, well, as I say, I've, I've released the gas from the, the cells, but I'm not going to plug it in. It, it'll turn on, it'll run off power. You know, if I want to play around with it, I can, but it's something I'm certainly not going to leave plugged in all the time because once you have a lithium cell that's puffed up like that, can you trust it? It could catch fire. It probably won't because the, the flammable gas has been removed it won't take a charge anyway the BMS software should shut it down and monitor the temperature and everything it should but why take a chance we take the battery right out and run it without a battery then there's absolutely no chance of any problem and that's what I'm gonna do and there it is again I turned that monitor off earlier looks like it's got a bit of a problem I'll have to deal with that but it's back up and running again there's what that one looks like on the big monitor nice big time display accurate to a fraction of a second and the reason I did this project was not because I want to waste more power the power supply is already there it's a four port USB power supply that's already running other equipment so the amount of power that it draws to run the um, the phone is negligible as is the modulator. The modulator is already there. There's a bank of modulators and it's part of it. It's already running. So the power consumption was already there. 
it's a multi-channel modulator that it's uh, running off of so it was already there so the added bit of power to run a, a small black and white monitor is uh, negligible but now that I'm running it on the phone let me show you some of the other clock displays that it can do that's one of my favorites I think I'll leave that one on for a while. I haven't had that one running for a while because the uh, phone hasn't been up and running due to the, the bad battery that I had. Now that I can power it up without dealing with a lithium ion battery, I can just power it up right off of 5 volts. I don't have to worry about the potential fire hazard with bad lithium batteries when they get to be very old. So anyway, uh, there, I figured I'd share that with you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.